Hey Valley Kids, welcome back to another math video. Tonight we're going to be working on writing two variable equations. Before we do that, let's get ahead and start with a trivia question for the tonight. Just for fun, who is this? Why today? Why do I have this picture there? We'll be back to learn more about that famous Yankee and why today is special after our instruction. But first let's start off with our official target, 1.10b2. I can write a two-variable equation to represent a situation. Hey, let's do this thing. Last night we talked about function tables, and we said that we have some x values, we have to figure out what the y value is, and it goes from 1 to 2. And so what's going on in between there? We had to figure out that function. We found out that whatever x is, 1 in this case, you add 1 to and you get the y. So 1, we take that 1 and we add another, the x plus 1, and we got 2. And here x is 2, so we had 2 plus 1 was 3. So we basically found out that the y value we kind of work backwards here. The y value is equal to whatever x is plus 1. Remember? It wasn't that long ago. 24 hours ago, you should have done that. Well, tonight we're going to try to do the same thing, but we're going to write a two-variable equation like this based upon a word problem. And I think that function table is going to help you. It helps me. Let's start off with our first example from the local Taco Bell. They make 120 Dorito Locos tacos an hour. Write an equation using two variables to show the relationship between the number of tacos they make, T, and the number of hours the store is open, H. Now, the th three most important things you'll be looking for tonight in these little story problems are number one, the numbers, and number two, the two variables. So those three things, numbers, variable, variable. So our numbers here are 120, and then our variable is H and T. So T is the total number of uh, tacos. So I put that over here, T. And the number of hours they're open, that's what changes. If they're open longer, they're going to make more tacos, right? So 120 times H, 120 tacos, times the number of hours will equal the total number of tacos. Some people are very... Are, some people very quickly pull that right out of the air. I have a little bit harder time with it, so sometimes if I can't figure it out, I make a function table like we had last night. And I just put in my two variables, my h, it's kind of like the x, and the t, kind of like the y. And I put in whatever they're giving me. So they said it's going to be 120 tacos per hour. So I figured out that's multiplying. So I just plug in some values and see if it makes sense. Well, let's, here's one hour, so it would be 1 times 120, 120 tacos. And I use low values like 1 and 2 all the time. So if there were 2 hours, 2 times the 120 would be 240. It makes sense, correct? Therefore, I know the equation, this function in here is correct. So now I can write it. And it usually kind of ends up getting written backwards. Usually it's the t or the y one over here, equals whatever this function is here. So the t equals 120 times h, or 120 h. All right, I'm going to have you try one. Here's one here about Mrs. Crothers. Mrs. Crothers makes $9 per hour dressing up like a chicken and waving at cars in front of canes. It's not dignified, but it pays the bills. Write an equation using two variables to show the relationship between the number of hours she works, h, in the amount of money she makes in. Okay, remember the three most important things? Numbers, here's nine dollars, and the two variables, H and M. Pause it and see if you can figure out what it would be. I'm bad. All right, well, if you just pull it out of the air, you might figure out that it's the money she makes is equal to nine, nine dollars, times the number of hours she works, or M equals nine H. If you couldn't figure that out, you could have made a little function table like I did and just go, well, here's the hours and here's the money she makes. So she works one hour at $9 an hour, it will be $9. Two hours at $9 an hour is 18. Okay, whatever I figured out here, this 9H works. 
So it's a great way not only to figure out what the function is, but to test your equation to see if it works. So when I see you working on these problems on your paper, I'm hoping to see a lot of these little function tables written as a way to write your equation and also check it to make sure it works. You just have to plug some values in, see if they make sense. All right, here's another type. It's a little more complicated. We'll start off with, it's about Sarah's Gourmet Cookies. This is a shout out to my neighbor Sarah who makes the best chocolate chip cookies ever. All right, Sarah's Gourmet Cookies cost $10 per dozen. It costs $5 to ship each order, no matter how big it is. Write an equation using two variables to show the relationship between the number of dozen cookies you buy, D, and the total cost, C. All right, so the three most important things, numbers, we've got $10 and we've got $5, and then the variables, D and C. Okay, what are we going to do? This is one of those ones that I start saying, okay, let's just take and figure it out. So I built a little table, and I know that it's going to be some number of dozen cookies, so I put a 1 and 2 in there. And I know that it's going to be $10 for a dozen, so I decided to multiply that. But I have to add $5 to ship them. So it was going to be $10 times the number of dozen plus the 5. So it sounds right, but I thought, Let's plug in some variables and see if it makes sense. So 1 dozen would be 10 times 1 plus the 5 to ship would be 15. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's try it for 2. 2 dozen would be 10 times 2 or 20 plus the $5 to ship would be 25. So it works. So I can use the function now to write that equation. So the total cost, C, will be the $10 or $10 per dozen, times the number of dozen, so 10D plus the 5 for shipping. So C cost equals 10 times the dozen plus 5. All right, see how I'm constantly talking myself through it? This is what I need you to be doing with your pencil and in your head, kind of talking things out, seeing if it makes sense. Let's have you try a similar example before I give you your ticket to the show. The Grand Ole Creamy Special order ice cream flavors are $40 per pail plus $3 per ingredient. Write an equation using two variables to show the relationship between the number of ingredients, I, and the cost, and the total cost, C, for a pail. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, again, I built a function table. And I knew that it was going to be $40 per pail. And the variable that was going to be changing was the number of ingredients. And that was $3. So I said, okay, one ingredient would be three times, because it was $3 for the ingredient, plus 40. So 3i, substitute in one. So three times one plus the 40 would be 43. Two ingredients would be three. $3 times the number of ingredients, I is 2, so 3 times 2 plus that $40 for the pail is 46. So it seems to make sense to me. All right, so the total cost then would be the function $3 times the number of ingredients plus 40, or C equals 3I plus 40. All right, you've been patient tonight. We'll be practicing these in class tomorrow. They're kind of tough, but I think you can get it if you think about the three most important things will be the numbers involved and the two variables and what they stand for. Remember how we labeled equations and what those variables were? You'll notice that I always label mine. It helps me figure out what I'm doing and if it makes sense. All right, here's your ticket to the show. Problem about my wife, Martha. Martha rents a moving truck in New York City. The truck costs $75 a day plus $1 per mile. Write a two-variable equation that shows the relationship between the miles driven, M, and the total cost, C, to rent that truck for a day. Go ahead and pause it and let you write that down. All right. Let's get on to the Just for Fun question. Who is this guy? Why today? This is Derek Jeter. Last night on September 25th, 2014. He played his last game in Yankee Stadium, took his last at bat. He had a walk-off hit to win the game. It was beautiful. 
Um, I'm not a huge Yankee fan, but Derek Jeter, he's the man. He's Mr. Yankee, Mr. Clutch. Um, look at some of these statistics on the guy. He's played for 20 years. Look at the total number of hits he had, 3,463 hits. He played in 2,700 games, 260 home runs, 1,300 RBIs. Um, the guy is a future Hall of Famer. So someday when you're sitting there, uh, in about five years, you guys will be in high school, and they're inducting him into the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. You'll be going, I remember when he had his last game in Yankee Stadium. Anyway. Watch for him. He might be playing this weekend uh, or next uh, this weekend in Boston, but I don't think he's going to play shortstop. I think he's just going to hit. I actually kind of hope he sits out. I think it was a beautiful ending to his career, ending at New York where uh, his fan base is. Um, but anyway, hats off to Derek Jeter on a great career. Thanks. Have a great evening.